r slash ask reddit what seemingly nice person turned out to be a monster chris watts no criminal history no drugs nice job nice home nice family murdered his pregnant wife and their two daughters uk here i remember months after the watts case broke I was speaking with a guy in PokerStars VR who said he was from Colorado. You'll recall at the time there was massive amounts of sympathy and public interest, even far from Colorado. When I brought up the Watts case, he said he'd never heard about it. When I gave him a quick overview, he said it was so foul that he didn't believe me. He genuinely did not believe that something so vile and harrowing could have happened. I told him to google Chris Watts murders and change the subject. Even after that he occasionally berated me for making up something as dark as that story. He couldn't get his head around the fact that something like that could actually have happened. Also, yo this day, I have no idea how he could have lived in Colorado and not heard about the story in all those months following. But that's another question. He was Chris Watts. Bill Cosby. It really hurt me when that news broke. Growing up in the 80s he was a household name, and as a father his comedy skits were amazingly relatable. The older I get and the more kids I have the more I can see myself in his stand-up routine. Some of the skits are so relevant and quotable that I still find myself falling back to them. And then it reminds me what he did and I feel dirty. For some of the younger redditors it may not be obvious just how well influential he was on my generation. But from the Cosby show started around the same time I could talk, and ran for 8 years. It then ran in constant syndication until streaming media replaced cable. His stand-up routine fatherhood was as charming as it was hilarious. He was funny, supportive, and successful, but also relatable. He spoke to the real frustrations of being a parent, but also worked through them with humor. He was the dad you wished you had, and painted a clear picture of the dad you wanted to be when you grew up. A genuine role model in the finest sense. When the allegations first came out it was easier to think they were a smear campaign. But as they proved credible it was like a punch in the gut. Not just a sense of disgust, but also betrayal, and a lingering shame to have ever adored his character. Let me add a little to this too. The Cosby show was huge for the black community. There had been other sitcoms focused on black families like Good Times or Samford and Son. But those showed families struggling with the realities of poverty. This was the first show that portrayed a black family as wealthy and successful. Bill playing a doctor. Teaching good lessons to his family. It was groundbreaking. And served as a real inspiration to a lot of people one generation older I know in my community. Cosby, in the show and outside it as a comedian spokesperson, was seen as a leading example of how to portray black people as capable of betterment. Not just as poor disadvantaged people who might fall into crime drugs and need pity. My grandma's old enough that she doesn't know about what Cosby did or maybe no one explained the full story to her. But she'll watch the show on her DVDs and honestly I wish I could go back and watch it too. It was a feel good show. Alas, the man behind it was quite the opposite of what he portrayed. Heard Ted Bundy was a really nice dude. Ted Bundy was so charming and handsome. Someone at his trial in Orlando, Florida did not believe he could possibly have done the Tallahassee murders, until she saw him erupt in rage during the trial. You should see pictures of the groupies he had. Author and Rule wrote a truly amazing book about Bundy, The Stranger Beside Me, and the movie The Deliberate Stranger with Mark Harmon does a really great job of showing how charming he was. I kind of studied him because I grew up in Orlando. Anne Rule was one of those people who couldn't believe it. Ted was her friend. He babysat for her. I can't imagine finding out my good friend was a serial killer. Josh Duggar. His family TV show painted this monster as the golden son. Holier than thou religious. He sexually assaulted his younger sisters as a teen. Utilized Ashley Madison to cheat on his wife. Physically assaulted a sex worker. And then was charged with possessing CSAM. He is waiting for his sentencing. He has 7 kids and has constantly been surrounded by children since his teenage years. He is a monster. A monster whose religion allowed him to thrive. He is the worst but I have to say he never struck me as actually nice. He seemed like a smug prick. 100% agreed. He's the embodiment of fake southern niceness that's amplified by his moral higher ground religious views. But there was and still is a minority of people who support him. Girls still want to marry his brothers and be associated with the family name. 
growing up in Lower Hutt, NZ I had a best friend across the road from my house. I played at his house a lot and was familiar with his dad. His dad was Jules Micus. Turned out he was guilty of raping a small girl when I was 3 and then burying her alive so that she choked on the sand she was buried in on the beach. At the time of crime DNA evidence was not developed. His skin and semen was found on her dead body and frozen till the day arrives that DNA testing could confirm his guilt and he died in jail. In between that time I used to hang out at his house and play with G.I. Joes and eat dinner with his family. Jules Micus News Article. Oh my gosh I remember when he was finally caught. My mum remembers when this happened I was a baby and she was devastated someone could do this to a child. It like really affected her she can't even explain why. He truly was an evil person. I hope he's rotting in hell. He was a short little man about 5 feet 4. He was real gruff but friendly at his house. His son who I knew legally changed both his names and is terribly ashamed. Nobody suspected. He would mow his elderly next door neighbor's grass when he mowed our grass. He had a rule of no toys or shouting at the dinner table. I was there when four police cars came to arrest him. His son was an adult doing an apprenticeship and had just left home. He was arrested late February early 2000s. I was at my parents house for a bit because I broke my leg and they were looking after me till it healed. The cars pulled up no sirens and he was taken away. Was a few weeks till we learned why. Jim Jones. If you were to kill him before he went bad he'd probably be remembered as a civil rights hero. The man started off in a really great direction. Egalitarianism in an age of hate. Then his ego started growing. Jim Jones is such a strange case because it was his dedication that ended up being his downfall. He didn't trust anyone else to run the people's temple so he worked so many hours and barely slept. He used amphetamines to stay awake and then took downers to fall asleep. Then he completely lost control and ended up killing 900 people. Moral. Don't do amphetamines. Yeah. He didn't trust anyone else because at one point he left for Brazil for a while and when he came back the people's temple was in shambles. It had split different ways. His monstrous ego couldn't handle that. He took even one person leaving as a deep personal offense. So from then on he was always on go. Also, it's people's temple with no apostrophe. It agreed better with the whole socialism thing they had going on. Edit. Because I sounded a little too sympathetic for my liking at first. My two best friends. I spent nearly all of my free time with two guys growing up. Us three were inseparable. They were my brothers and I loved them. We first met in first and third grade. We all grew up watching the same movies, playing the same games, and doing the same activities. As a result, we just grew fonder the longer time went on. We had our ups and downs, and even times of serious arguments, but we always ended up back together in the end cut to when I'm 24 and it's been hard the past couple years. One seems to have zero aspersions, and the other has become the biggest mooch you could find. My one friend kept hitting on my girlfriend for a year and a half straight. She made it very clear that she was friends with him but nothing more. He got drunk one night and threw himself at her trying to make out with her. It was the last straw. I cut him out entirely. My other friend, the mooch, stole from me about two weeks later. He owed me a ton of money because he never worked. I always paid his way. I knew if never get the cash back when I paid his way. But I wanted him to be included. He was a brother. Having to have someone pay for you and stealing are quite different things though. He wouldn't admit fault when I caught him. Nor would he apologize. That was my sign that he was no longer a mooch. But now a thief. I decided to cut him out too. All that being said. I miss them every day. I wish they would have matured and we could have all stayed friends. They're like 90% of my childhood memories. So it's hard to not think about them. But I guess they probably don't feel the same. 20 plus years of friendship was worth trying to get laid and $68 to them. I hope they're doing good. But I'll never let them back into my life. I felt this. I had this one friend who I had seen every day. We were inseparable. I took her and her boyfriend to my family's cabin for a weekend trip and a few days after we had left I get a call from a family member. Turns out she had stolen a bunch of stuff from the room she was staying in. There were previous incidents of things going missing but I couldn't prove it until that point. We had a big fight about it. I got the stuff back and we haven't spoken since. It's been almost 7 years and I still miss the good times we had. 
So sorry you've had to go through this. Some people aren't meant to be in our lives forever. Only in a chapter of our lives. Remember the good times. Surprised no one's mentioned Ellen be kind to one another degenerate yet. I mean she was a dong maybe. But it's pretty extreme to say she was a monster. Yes but this is reddit. We don't do measured. Reasonable assessments. Someone is either amazing or Hitler. Get with it. Gary Glitter. Pedo guy from the 70s. For those who don't know. He did rock and roll part 2. Which is still played at tons of sporting events. If you live in North America or the UK, you know it. Jared Fogel. What's so weird about him is that he was talking to her parent and he just straight up asked her to put cameras in their room so he could watch and asked her to choose which child he could watch. Like he just came out of nowhere and said that stuff. That woman is a hero. By the way, she talked to him led him on with that stuff for years while she had the FBI surveil him and gather evidence. Can you imagine having to fake being nice and fake being into the stuff Fogel was into? For years while the FBI gathered evidence? She is seriously an unsung hero and got a sick and twisted man off the streets. Edit. Her name is Rochelle Herman. Jimmy Savile. American here I heard a member of the Sex Pistols once called him out and got banned off the BBC. Yup, one of the few times that Johnny Rotten was one of the good guys. Rick James, the guy who sang Super Freak, comma tortured some poor girl in his apartment for 3 days, comma assaulted a woman a year later, also allegedly raped a 15 year old 2 years before the torture. Great song, shitty human. Oh, J. Simpson, always had the nice guy persona. He was the studio's first choice for the title role in The Terminator. But James Cameron cast Schwarzenegger instead because he didn't think OJ would be believable as a ruthless killer. That blue furry dude in Sesame Street, who eats cookies all the time. Yep, his original name was Cookie Nice Person until he revealed his true nature. His real name is Sid which I can only assume is short for Insidious. Alison Mack. She wasn't a developing monster under the rug per se as far as I know, but the horrible, heinous act she did through Xiv certainly tore apart both her humanity and her smallville character nostalgia from the public eye. Uh, my mom, Mio. Ha, huh, that's what I came to say, comes across as a kind, god-fearing do-gooder to most everyone but behind closed doors with her immediate family, she can't hide her horns, but now that dad is gone, she's having trouble hiding it. Ro, can't believe you know their mom so well. Kid I grew up with, maybe not a monster but an awful person. We knew each other our whole lives. He was a beloved friend of mine. In college he dated my roommate. He verbally and emotionally abused her. Wouldn't let her leave his sight. Constantly accused her of cheating. Got a job where she worked and got on the same shift rotation. Made her plan the same schedule as him for second semester. Threatened her. Threw things at her. Ripped a closet door off the hinges when I came with her to get her stuff. I stood between them and this kid I knew for 15 years and had camped with me on spring break. Knew all my secrets. He told me to move or he would make me. He stalked my roommate. Followed her around campus. Came to her hospital room and had to be removed by security after she attempted suicide. Got banned from our dorm. Transferred colleges and went back to our hometown where he proceeded to tell everyone I was a lesbian who was a man hater and in love with his girlfriend. So I manipulated her into calling him abusive and getting him kicked out. And because he was so beloved, most of our friends believed him. I lost a lot of friends. He has since been reported by more recent girlfriends. Has been in and out of rehab. Drunk driving. Drug problems. Etc. This was someone I genuinely was close with for years. It was like he became a different person. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.